Hey everyone, it's Monica. Welcome to my channel. This is where I post educational videos for medical students, residents, basically all levels of doctor training. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to do a stable medicine admission from the emergency room step by step. Now remember, this is just a suggested guideline. As you get more experienced, you'll be doing multiple steps at once, or you'll have figured out a more efficient way that suits your workflow better. But I do think it's good to have a starting checklist of some sort, so here it is. For those of you who are new, maybe medical students who are just about to go into wards, yay! Admission orders are the orders that you need to put into the computer to officially admit the patient into the hospital. So in EPIC, which is the electronic medical record that I use, the admission orders are organized into an order set. And those orders include things like orders that assign the patient to a particular service, such as medicine, general surgery, urology, neurology, etc., and an attending physician who is officially gonna be in charge of that patient. The admission order set also includes things like cardiac monitoring, continuous pulse oximetry, DVT prophylaxis, diet orders, activity orders, like does the patient need to be assisted out of bed, for example, and a lot of other little things like as needed medications like Tylenol for pain, nausea medications, etc. The point is these admission orders officially assign the patient to a service and a doctor and put the patient in line for a hospital bed. So now that we've clarified what admission orders are, let's go into detail on the steps on how to do an admission. Step number one, brief chart review. The point of this brief chart review is to get a rough idea of why the patient's there, how sick the patient is, and what's been done for the patient so far. You also wanna figure out if the patient was triaged appropriately, meaning is the patient really supposed to come to you as opposed to a different service. So to accomplish this, you're gonna look through the ER physician's note, the vital signs, the labs and imaging that were obtained in the ER, and the MAR, or the Medication Administration Record. So first, look at the ER note, look at the HPI, and get a general sense of why the patient's there. Then look at the vital signs and see how sick the patient is. Is the patient tachycardic, hypotensive, hypoxic? How sick is the patient? And then three, look at the labs and imaging that were obtained in the ER. And then four, you want to look at the MAR or the medication administration record so you can see exactly what has been given to the patient so far while the patient's been in the ER. Even better if you really wanna be efficient, open and start a note. Put in your note template for an admission note and go ahead and start typing things into your problem list. If you wanna know how to write a good problem list, check out my video on that. So once you have a general idea of what's going on, you wanna call the ER back to get sign out. Again, this initial chart review is brief, like three to five minutes, so don't keep the ER waiting for too long because they wanna sign out the patient and move on to other patients as well. When you do call the ER, they're gonna give you a spiel of what's going on and what they've done for the patient so far. And that's also your chance to ask any clarifying questions. If there's anything confusing in their note or if there's anything in the vital signs or the labs that might not have been addressed. So again, the point is to get the story, ask any clarifying questions and make sure the patient is safe. Step three, see the patient or do more of a chart review, or put in skeleton orders. So this step is kind of messy because it's kind of a branch point that depends on how sick the patient is and how busy you are. Like, do you have other admissions that you're taking care of, or do you have a really sick patient that you're cross-covering? If the new patient that you're admitting is sick and needs immediate medical attention, like they're hemodynamically unstable, they're hypoxic, then you don't have time to do a deep dive in the chart then and there. You really should go to the bedside right away, and you can do admission orders at the bedside. If the patient is stable and doesn't necessarily need to be seen within the next few minutes, then great, you actually have some time to do a little bit of a chart review before you even go see the patient. During this time, you can write out a preliminary problem list, review any historical data, and using this information, you can come up with a well-informed differential diagnosis before you even interview and examine the patient. I'll do a separate video on how to do a good chart biopsy because it's a really important skill and it took me a very long time to figure it out. Now, the third scenario is if the patient is really stable, but you're busy, you're taking care of another sick patient, or you have a gazillion other admissions and you may not be able to see the patient within the next even half hour or so, then you can go ahead and put what we call skeleton orders. So these are like the bare minimum admission orders to at least assign the patient to you and get the patient in line for a hospital bed. The reason why you wanna get these skeleton orders in is that you really don't wanna delay admission orders if you can, because once the ER has given you sign out, it's tag, you're it. Now you are in charge of that patient and the system needs to be updated to reflect that. Also, you wanna get the patient in line for a hospital bed because you don't want the patient to be waiting in the ER forever. So just to summarize, if the patient's really sick, go see the patient, do the admission orders at the bedside, 
If the patient is very stable and you have time, you can just do a really good chart review before you go see them. If the patient's very stable but you don't have time to be doing a chart review or really do anything, you can throw in some skeleton orders and then deal with whatever you're dealing with and see the patient later. Step four, interview and examine the patient. So yay, now we're officially seeing the patient. Now remember that format that you learned literally the first year of medical school and it's consistent across oral presentations, notes, published papers, etc. Yeah. You definitely want to memorize it and you definitely want to use it every single time. So I'm talking HPI, ER course, past medical history, past surgical history, medications, allergies, family history, social history. In that order, every time, be consistent and you won't miss details. If you're lucky, the patient's room will have a computer in there and that is literally the best case scenario because it saves you so much time. I'm literally typing my note as I'm talking to the patient and that way when I leave the room, half my note is already finished. So what I do is when I walk into the room, I introduce myself to the patient and then I ask like, hey, is it okay if I type as we talk so that way I don't miss any details and also I can really quickly get your admission orders in to get you in line for that hospital bed because most patients don't want to be sitting in the ER forever. Then once I finish typing my note and I'm done with my interview, I put in admission orders and I like putting in admission orders at the bedside because then I can do everything at once. I can reconcile home medications, I can discuss their co-status, then I examine the patient and I usually document my physical exam later on when I'm finishing my note. And then finally, before I leave the room, I explain my preliminary thoughts and plans to the patient. If you're a medical student or a resident and you know that your plan is not necessarily going to be the final plan, then you can definitely go ahead and mention that to the patient, but still give them a little bit of an idea of what you're thinking because chances are you're not too, too far off base. If you don't have a computer in the room, all good, just use pen and paper. So I don't always have a computer because sometimes the patient is in the hallway of the ER. So I'll literally take a piece of paper, a blank sheet, and I write out the sections by hand, HPI, past medical history, past surgical history, et cetera, and I fill in the sections as I go as I'm interviewing the patient. So yes, even as an attending, I'm still writing those sections out on a piece of paper, and then it's really easy to transfer it into a note later when I get to a computer. Step five, write orders and write your assessment plan. So this part might be a little stylistic, but this is what I do in terms of my workflow. After I've seen the patient, I go sit down at a computer and this is where I do my thinking and my execution, where I actually put in the orders. This is that critical time period where you have now gathered all the data that you need and this is where you synthesize everything to come up with your differential diagnosis and to determine how you're gonna treat the patient. I'll pull up my note again, pull up my assessment plan and I'll start writing out my problem list and then I'll fill in my plan. As I'm filling in my plan for each problem, I'm also typing in the orders into the computer. So if I write down in my plan that I'm gonna get a TTE, then I'm also ordering a TTE at that moment. So that way I don't forget to order anything. You definitely wanna make sure you're not writing things down in your plan and then forgetting to order it later. This is also that time where you can be paging consultants if any need to be paged right away. Also, don't forget to put in AM labs as part of your orders, morning labs. So if there are any labs that need to be trended or followed up again in the morning, be sure those orders are in so you don't forget. Step six is finishing your note. So after you're done putting in all the orders, you've called your consultants, now is the time that where you can actually finish your note. So you just go through and fill in any gaps or missing details and then you sign it. If you're a medical student or a resident, then you may not have time to finish your note until after you've presented the patient. So I would say the oral presentation to your attending would fall after step five, after you've put in all those initial orders. And that's my whole medicine admission process. So this is what I'm doing all night as a nocturnist. I cross cover some patients, but I'm mostly doing admissions all night. Sometimes I get several admissions at once, so I'm trying to start multiple notes and multitask as best as I can. Thank you guys so much for watching. Give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more tips. Bye guys.